I'm very happy to, to see you again. And I regret not to be in, Va in Warsaw. Uh, the first, uh, my presentation is a focus on a clinical case. I, I have to go back. Yes, it's working. A 60 year old uh, male, uh, no specific medical history. And in November uh, 2016, he received epigastric pain without any weight loss. So the diagnostic was done with a tumor, a pancreatic tumor located in the incinate process with arterial and venous encasement. The size of the tumor was 35 millimeters. So the biopsy obtained by uh, endoscopy uh, was excretobiliary adenocarcinoma. So due to the locally advanced cancer, a chemotherapy was started, as you can see, with uh, four cycles from uh, January to April 2017. So evolution under chemotherapy, uh, the reassessment that has been done after four cycles of uh, folferinox showed uh, uh, an increase of the size of the tumor and increase also of the uh, CA99. So that uh, the oncologist decided to stop for furinox and start with the stereotaxic radiotherapy and second line of chemotherapy with the Xerox uh, in May and June 2017. And they stopped treatment. Um, yeah, uh, this one. Yes, and no option, uh, no surgical option was proposed to the patient at that time. And there was, uh, uh, it was decided just to survey and a reassessment was done a few months later in December 2017. The radiological and biological objective response was shown with uh, at, uh, MRI and CT scan uh, stabilization of the tumor with a 37 millimeter diameter. The CA99 was also stable. The CAA was uh, normal and the CT, the PET CT done in uh, January 2018 was normal. So that it was decided uh, to wait. And at the meantime, uh, a reassessment was done in a few months later, in April and March, and uh, the MRI and CT scan showed always a tumor which was stable, but an increase of the CI-99. The PET-CT done in April 2018 uh, showed a, a spot in the head of the pancreas and a spot in the liver, in the segment two, uh, on the left liver. So that it means the, there was a revolution of the tumor. What, uh, can I ask a question to the assistants maybe, I, I hope, what do you do now? Uh, Is there some idea? Do you have a, can you show us the CT scan or something? The CT scan, this one. Yeah, but a little more than that. <laughs> no, I have not more than okay. that. So, but it, yeah. it, 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 there was a a re, an increase but of the tumor with a, so, a recurrence so of the tumor. So basically, it's a locally advanced lesion with a liver metastasis, right? A suspicion of uh, liver metastasis. Did you do an MRI the of the liver? Two. Did you do an MRI of the liver? Yes, we did. But there was no, nothing on the MRI. Nothing. And the, the PET scan? And Only the PET the... scan showed a spot in the head of the pancreas located in uh, the acidic process and a spot in the liver, a small spot. So the, the lesion in the liver is visible on the PET scan, but not on the MRI? Yes. Correct. Okay. Anybody wants to uh, comment here? <laughs> okay. Uh, biopsy of what? 
the pancreas was biopsied already. It's posi we have a biopsy of the pancreas, which shows that no yes, carcinoma. The and the patient had yes. chemotherapy. Adenocarcinoma, ductal adenocarcinoma. So uh, basically, uh, it's now or never, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. I have, a, I have oh, just a question. May I? Sure. Jean Robert, uh, have you have you um, molecular biology for the patient? Because uh, curiously, it doesn't uh, respond to fulfirinox, and then. With platin, uh, there, there, there was an, an objective response. Probably the patient that, is BRCA2. At that time, sure, at that time of the diagnostic, I, I didn't have that now. Okay. But explain to me, guys. Uh, Xelox include 5-FU, which is Zeloda, and oxaliplatin. Yes. And Folfurinox is, is the same, plus the uh, the irinotecan. So what's the, so there's not a big difference between the two regimens. Yes, but it was the choice of the oncologist. The oncologist okay. was not uh, located in the, in Strasbourg because this patient was coming from another city. No, but because Jean Robert is uh, suggesting that uh, it's a different yeah, chemotherapy, but it's not so yeah. much different. Jean, is it Jean Robert? No, it's not so much different, but pro and probably the response is due to the stereotactic yeah, radiation. radiotherapy, okay. probably. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Prob more than probably. More uh, than probably. What, 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 what's the place of Abraxan? It, it wasn't proposed to this patient. Okay. Yeah. And Jean-Robert, what do you think of Abraxan? We don't have a vaccine in our institution. That's correct. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so uh, I have a question or, sure. or maybe suggestion rather. Uh, since the tumor is small and we now know the nature of the tumor, uh, can you consider nano knife procedure and then continue the uh, chemotherapy? This Someone... is a uh, uh, less invasive procedure and you can consider nano knife procedure and then continue the chemotherapy because uh, nano life, of course, uh, does not resolve. The, the patient already the received radiation. radiation. What kind of radiation did the yes. patient get? Uh, stereotoxic. So it's like uh, it's uh, it's cyber knife. What what did you use for that? Just uh, regular it's, uh, regular like radiation. The, like the, no, it's the, another another the, um, technique, but it's. Uh, Almost a cyber knife. Yes. Because the, 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 from the room, someone is suggesting nano knife, which is the same, right? Yes, it's the same, yes. For, uh, so who would operate? I'm doing a poll here. Raise your hand. Who would operate? Ah, no, René has a question. No, um, for, for me, the critical issue is to know what is the nature of, uh, of the focal lesion of the Absolutely. liver. Because very clearly, if it is metastasis, we should stop there. And for in terms of surgery, and so have you, Philippe, the possibility to go further to do a, a, a biopsy of this nodule? Because if metastatic, no. why? No, it, it was you know, it was not visible uh, in uh, MRI and CT scan, and this uh, spot on the PET CT was uh, very high in the segment two of the liver, close to the. Okay. Close to the earth. And it was only visible on the PET CT, not on other imagings. Yes, exactly. Okay. So very it's, very it's, small spot. It's subcapsular? No, no, it was inside the parenchyma. Okay. It's only two metastases. It's, it's curious. One, 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 one metastasis. It's highly curious that the uh, MRI is, uh, was negative and the PET uh, positive. But probably because it was very high in the liver, uh, close to the diaphragm and the heart. So probably, but uh, with the MRI, there was nothing. Usually, the sensitivity of PET scan is less than the other imaging modalities. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so once again, who, so, uh, who brings uh, the patient to the operating room? Who operates? Yes, that is the real question. So operate, oh, raise your hands if you do surgery. 
I do an exploratory surgery personally, but uh, okay. There's a minority that would go to the operating. And uh, Jean Robert, you operate? Yes, for an exploration. Exploration. Yeah. Okay, you, Philippe, go ahead. Okay, we did a reassessment before because we decided to operate the patient. This patient came in outpatient clinic in a few months after this, he stopped the treatment. So he was in good performance status uh, without any pain. The liver function was normal and the CNN 99 continues to increase. So you have the CT scan here showing the contact and the encasement of the SMA and the, the size here of the tumor. There was an occlusion of the of the vein, of the vein, satric vein, as you can see here. Yeah, there was no vein here. So and you had imaging. What you we didn't did. Want to show it. <laughs> because I asked you for imaging, you said you had, didn't have, but you had to show us. That's all right. Uh, you didn't see? Yes. No, we see. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Can you see the arrow, the, the, the white arrow here? No. No, on voit très bien, on voit très bien. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, what we did uh, more than an exploration, we did a, a pancreatic, duodenal pancreatectomy extended to the right part of the uh, body of the pancreas with a monoblock uh, resection of the confluence, venous confluence, with segmental resection of the SMA, and we use for that a transitory mesotelial portal passive shunt. Uh, the video I will show to, tomorrow will explain everything. Just to this transitor mesotric portal shunt is uh, uh, for uh, maintaining the, the portal flow during the dissection. We did also a large lymphadenectomy, and the arterial reconstruction was done with a saphenous graft. I will show you the uh, operative uh, slide. And the anastomose for the reconstruction of the vein was done between the splenic vein and the renal vein, the left renal vein, and also with the iliocolic vein into the portal tract. You can see here the splenorenal here, anastomose, and the implantation of the iliocolic vein into the portal vein. And you can see here the proximal stamp of the uh, SMA and the distal stamp uh, using this saphenous graft. And for the liver, we discovered doing uh, enhanced uh, ultrasound, uh, echogenic nodule, one centimeter of diameter in segment two. Uh, it, it was difficult to, uh, to, 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 to aim as, uh, with a needle uh, this, uh, this lesion. Uh, I don't know why, probably there was some uh, fibrotic tissue inside, so that we didn't do a, a, a biopsy just uh, because I, I was a little bit afraid to, to lose the, the, the target. And uh, we um, destroyed um, with the radiofrequency ablation the area of this nodule. So you can see here the post-operative CT scan with a pancreaticogastrostomy. And this patient post-operative course was uh, uneventful, just a small bleeding from the stump of the pancreas into the, uh, the stomach. So that which uh, was uh, resolutive with uh, just uh, uh, transfusion and that's all. Discharge after three weeks. You can see here the pathologic finding with uh, this tumor T3 and 1, 2 uh, on, uh, by a 40 uh, lymph node. And the resection was R1 due to uh, neural inv invasion. So after this operation, it, it confirms the uh, adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. We start again with gencitabine, one cycle. But this uh, gemcitabine has to be stopped uh, after one cycle because of uh, a persistent weight loss and the patient was not comfortable. So that we start a, a, a follow-up. And during this follow-up, without any treatment, we are now at 40 more than 40 months, 42 months after the operation. There was a progressive normalization of the, of the CA99. And now we have seen uh, recently this patient, he was in, in normal status, uh, 
good metabolic tolerance, no diabetes, and uh, is uh, very sportive and do a lot of uh, uh, motorcycles. So the reassessment we did recently, the C99 was normal, and the CT scan didn't show any recurrence of the disease. So my conclusion is, in this kind of situation, we, we have to never give up. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Oscar? Oscar, you can... Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, congratulations, Philippe, for the fantastic uh, and wonderful operation. I have two questions uh, uh, for you. The first one is, uh, what do you think about radiofrequency in patients with a, a, a biliary digestive anastomosis? Could it be more risky of um, infection of the necrotic area? And the second one, uh, when we perform some extensive a periarterial clearance, we have diarrhea that is very difficult to, to be corrected. The patient is with codeine, I, I, I saw, but how do you manage this kind of uh, uh, side effects of this uh, so, great clearance in, in the, in the uh, superior mesenteric artery? Yeah, Thank you're you. right. There is a, a very a risk of uh, abscess in the liver after radiofrequency. So just to avoid that, it's evolution. We, we cover the postoperative uh, uh, cross uh, period uh, in two or three weeks by antibiotics and with a large uh, spectrum. And uh, if uh, one abscess occurred, uh, we, we do a percutaneous drainage. So it works very well. But we, are, we have to be very careful with that and we have to be very attentive in the, so that we, we do a, a CT scan after one week and after two weeks before discharging the patient. That's very important because it, if something is going wrong, we, uh, we, we go to the percutaneous drainage. With the percutaneous drainage, if there is one or two uh, focal abscess, that is not a problem. And the second question, you are right, because this patient with extensive lymphadenectomy, we, when we remove all the tissue around the zodiac trunk, the mesotic artery, they have a diarrhea. Uh, it, it can increase to uh, 10 diarrhea a day, uh, even in the, in the night. It, it may be very, very uh, disastrous. So, uh, but this patient, didn't have so much diarrhea, five, five uh, by, by day, per day. And uh, finally, the, the diarrhea, when we look at the evolution of all the patients, we did this kind of operations, the, the diarrhea decreased or stopped after six months, or, uh, sometimes after one year. So we have to, to be also... Uh, we have to discuss with the patient. The risk of diarrhea is, uh, say to the patient before operation, they are uh, aware of that. So uh, I think uh, they have to, uh, to to drink a lot and that's all. We cannot uh, avoid this. Hey, we have to this move uh, inconvenient. The codeine was for diarrhea, right? Yes, but... Uh, yeah, that's okay. So uh, we have a question from the room. One short, short question. Um, nice operation, impressive. We have a little bit of policy to do arterial and venous resection pancreatic carcinoma without metastasis. What would you have done? Because the nodule was one centimeter. Now you did a microwave. What would you have done if you have biopsied it and you had an ex tempo and it said adenocarcinoma in the liver? Would you have done the same operation? Maybe yes, maybe not. <laughs> because... Uh... Uh, so, so this patient is uh, young, young, 60 years, is, uh, I consider it young. He was um, very sportive, very, very, in very good status, and uh, all the treatment was tried before. And uh, as you've seen, he didn't support the gemcitabine, so that it, even if we decided not to press this patient, considering there was a metastat confirmed by a biopsy uh, when it was time to decide, uh, 
probably I, I, I would have done the same shows, choice. Uh, Can you tell us your contraindication to resection of pancreatic adenocarcinoma? Contraindication. Extension to the outer, extension to the second order branches of the SMA in the root of the mesentery, and also liver metastases when the liver metastases are not controlled by a previous uh, treatment. We, we, are, are no, we are now uh, uh, assessing the, our series of liver metastases. We operate this patient also. We have more than 40 patients now, and we, we will publish a, a paper uh, very soon. Okay, any more questions? Okay, very, very impressive case. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel.